Welcome to the tribe, homies. Today, we got a video where a trooper forces a cop to ID himself. I'm extremely interested to dive into this. This is from the Audit the Audit channel, which we did a couple of videos from recently. And you guys said that you guys enjoyed these videos especially. So we're going to dive into some more of them. I found a few that might be interesting. Let's uh, let's see how this one plays out. May 31st, 2013, plainclothes officer Robert Dubway of the Bergen County Sheriff's Office stopped a minivan on the New Jersey Turnpike in Leonia, New Jersey. While he was conducting the stop, an unidentified trooper from the New Jersey State Police noticed the situation and also stopped his cruiser on the side of the road. The interaction that followed was recorded on the state trooper's dash cam. Blue dash cam. <laughs> this already got crazy. The cops like, don't do that again, brother. The state troopers like, f you. I do whatever I want. Who are you? I do. We, right. I, I do. You got what? Armed robbery. You got police and person. I see what you got. I got a backup. I got a backup. No, you're not going to tell me to leave here. This is my spot right here. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. The state trooper draws his handgun and approaches Officer Dubway, later claiming he had unholstered his firearm because of a series of recent armed robbery carjackings where the suspects impersonated police officers. According to the New Jersey Attorney General's use of force policy for the year 2000, which appears to have been in place at the time of the incident, quote, a law enforcement officer shall not unholster or exhibit a firearm except under any of the following circumstances, for maintenance of the firearm, to secure the firearm, during training exercises, practice, or qualification with the firearm when circumstances create a reasonable belief that it may be necessary for the officer to use the firearm when circumstances create a reasonable belief that display of a firearm as an element of constructive authority helps establish or maintain control in a potentially dangerous situation in an effort to discourage resistance and ensure officer safety as the policy also explains quote constructive authority does not involve actual physical contact with the subject but involves the use of the law enforcement officer officer's authority to exert control over a subject. Examples include verbal commands, gestures, warnings, and unholstering a weapon. Pointing a firearm at a subject is an element of constructive authority to be used only in appropriate situations. The current version of the New Jersey Attorney General's use of force policy, which was published in April 2022, includes a very similar definition of constructive authority, but clarifies that, quote, constructive authority is not considered a use of force because it does not involve physical contact with the subject. The updated policy also includes revised rules for when an officer can display a firearm, stating that, quote, unholstering or pointing a firearm are tactics that should be used with great caution. The presence of an officer's firearm, under the right circumstances, can discourage resistance and ensure officer safety in potentially dangerous situations without the need to resort to force. At the same time, however, unnecessarily or prematurely drawing a firearm could limit an officer's options and controlling a situation, could create greater anxiety on the part of citizens, and may result in an unwarranted or accidental discharge of the firearm. The current policy also clarifies that, quote, officers may point a firearm at a person only when circumstances create a reasonable belief that it may be necessary for the officer to use deadly force. When the officer no longer reasonably believes that deadly force may be necessary, the officer shall, as soon as practicable, secure or holster the firearm. Due to the lower quality of the dash cam footage available, it is unclear whether the state trooper simply unholstered his weapon or pointed it at Officer Dubois. But, based on their conversation, it seems most likely that the trooper merely drew his firearm without pointing it. It is highly probable that a trooper unholstering his weapon when approaching the scene of a potential armed robbery would be found reasonable under both the prior and current versions of the use of force policy. And while it is less likely that pointing the firearm would be considered to be in line with the new policy, there is at least an argument to be made that the trooper had a reasonable belief that it could be necessary for him to use deadly force under the circumstances. Okay. Yeah, all right. 
Facts? Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, you don't. Apparently you don't. Yeah. Ice front. Why are you looking at me? Okay, I didn't expect this. I'm assuming the other people that walked up, they look like they're the one seemed like he was an officer. He had a walkie talkie, I think. So they might also be plain clothes officers that are undercover or something. I assume working with the deputy maybe to come and try to help the situation out. But they, yo, they just go and add it right now. This is kind of funny. Sergeant Gabriel Escobar arrives at the stop, and although it is difficult to determine who's saying what on the dash cam footage, all three officers appear to scream profanities at each other for an extended period of time. While neither the New Jersey State Police Department nor the Bergen County Sheriff's Office has made their professionalism policies publicly available, the State Police's <laughs> mission statement notes that, quote, the New Jersey State Police is committed to protect, preserve, and safeguard the constitutional and civil rights of all citizens through- I'm, hold on, we're, I'm I'm curious if the people in the car that were being pulled over are recording this on cell phone. It was 2013, so it's probably less likely or bad quality. But imagine if that was like this year. We would have got such great footage of this. It's just it's also kind of worrisome, though, when you think about it. I get that they're from different, you know, one's a deputy, whatever, one's a, a state trooper. You'd like to think that there's some more getting along amongst them. Like even if there's a situation like this where there's a, a bit of a you know, like that they would come to a conclusion civilly because they're officers. It's kind of scary that this is the people that, you know, I don't know. It's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit scary, a little bit scary, but I'm curious how this plays out now. Through impartial and courteous law enforcement with integrity and professionalism, we shall ensure public safety and provide quality service in partnership with our communities. Likewise, the values section of the Bergen County Sheriff's Office's website states that, quote, the Bergen County Sheriff's Office commits to achieving our vision and mission by exhibiting professional and community leadership and includes in the department's values both, quote, respect, treating all people with consideration, dignity, and fairness, and professionalism, dedicated to providing superior service through innovation, collaboration, and partnerships. I'm just saying. Similarly, Rule 4.10.1 of the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice Model Rules and Regulations requires that, quote, employees shall be courteous and orderly in their dealings with the public. They shall perform their duties politely, avoiding <laughs> profane language, and shall always remain calm regardless of provocation. Although this rule is specifically aimed at dealings with the public rather than with other law enforcement agencies, and the actual policies of the department's Involved are not publicly available, it seems a safe assumption that screaming profanities at an officer from another police agency would violate the tenets of professionalism required of both the state trooper and the county officers. You put your gun on me! Scumbag! You are a scumbag! You! If you have the uniform and I fing wipe the street with you, you put your gun on me! You fing police, scumbag! What the fing? I look like you arrested for three of them in the last month! Three of them in unmarked cars. Arrest the police impersonators. So don't come out here rocking a fucking uniform. Oh, you better than anybody. You know who I am. That makes no sense. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't know if what the trooper is saying is true, but if he is saying that we've had this happening, we've already arrested like three people, you may be exaggerating that number, but regardless, even if it's one person, I, it makes sense that he would go up with caution, unholstered just in case, because yeah, you don't know. And it's just weird that he says that. And the guy, the guy's response was, so don't come out. after he says, hey, we had a bunch of impersonators, that's why I pulled my gun. Basically saying, I'm being cautious. Well, don't come out here effing walking up in effing uniform thinking you're better than anybody. It's like, 
I've got to be cautious. Like, what if you weren't you and I came up without it pulled out and you pulled the gun and just shot me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is so wild. Cops are so, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting how they operate when it's amongst each other. Don't walk up and do this. Don't do that. When they would, that guy probably happily does that to people that he, I'm not going to put that on him because I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. I don't want to say all cops are bad because they're not. I'm one of the people that argues against that strongly, but there are some out there that be doing it. And I feel like when hearing these guys interact, sound like people that might fly off the hinge a little bit. I'm out here walking up. You you better than anybody. You know who I am. Really? You know who I am. I don't know who you are. You my ID. Arrest on me. That's best, bro. Who do they have this one? Did I see that when I first walked in? But you saw it afterwards, scumbag. What, did I have my gun out after I saw that? Did I throw you out? Arrest the police impersonator. That's right. It's a f***ing move. It's a rookie move. You know who I am. The state trooper claims that he demanded Officer Dubois' identification because of the recent string of robberies involving police impersonators. In general, there is no obligation under New Jersey law for an individual to identify themselves to the police, even if the officer has reasonable suspicion to detain them. New Jersey does not have a stop and identify law, and courts have determined that the state's obstruction statute, which is codified in Section 2C29-1 of the New Jersey Code, does not criminalize an individual's refusal to identify themselves. The now, does that change, though, because he thought that he was one of these people robbing somebody, pulling them over, pretending to be a cop, right? I feel like that's different than just someone walking down the street and being like, identify. The statute states that, quote, a person commits an offense if he purposely obstructs, impairs, or perverts the administration of law or other governmental function, or prevents or attempts to prevent a public servant from lawfully performing an official function by means of flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. When deciding cases involving this statute, New Jersey courts have consistently determined that individuals cannot be convicted of obstruction unless they take one of the specifically listed physical actions or they engage in a, quote, independently unlawful act. The Superior Court of the New Jersey Appellate Division held in the 2020 case of Bryant versus Camden County Police Department that an individual could not be convicted under this statute for refusing to show identification to a police officer, explaining that because the interaction was not initiated on the belief that the suspect had violated a traffic law, he had the right to refuse to turn over his identification. The court explained that, quote, we do not envision a prudent person would believe there was a reasonable basis to arrest Bryant for obstruction for merely not turning over his identification. Bryant committed no unlawful act to impede the investigation. To rule otherwise gives law enforcement without a reasonable basis the right right to demand that a person provide identification and charge that person under the obstruction statute for not complying. Of course, the situation at hand is much more complicated than okay. an officer stopping a Fair civilian enough. on the street, as this interaction occurred between two officers after one officer had conducted a traffic stop on a citizen, and there's no case law that discusses this unique scenario. However, it is unlikely that a court would conclude that Officer Dubois was legally obligated to identify himself, given the lack of a stop and identify law in New Jersey and the fact that officers typically do not have a legal duty to disclose their identities. See, I feel like that should change then because let's just say he was pretending to be a cop and falsely pulling somebody over. That's basically saying that he could just look at this cop who now pulls him to make sure that he's not robbing this person. He's just like, nope, I'm an officer. I don't have to identify it. Yeah, that's a little tricky. I feel like it's a little bit tricky. That being said, it is certainly possible that a court could conclude that under the circumstances, the state trooper would have probable cause to arrest Officer Dubois okay. for an offense related to the impersonation of a police officer or carjacking if he refused to provide any evidence that he was actually a police officer. Fair enough. Given the fact that he was in plain clothes. You don't know the story. I just told you the story, story, and you're still what? acting like. What does that mean? I just told you the story. So when you're playing clothes, guys do that. Do we do that to them? Well, listen. When I'm playing, guys are out here working. They let us know. I don't come out to do uh, uh, Because you're not from here. You don't know about here. Okay. Where are you from? The mall right, because I only got six months on the job. Because it's an issue now. Now it's an issue. Now it's an issue. 
First of all, I'm not going to take an issue of it. I'll work down here. I'm not working down here, all right? Oh, you're not going to take an issue of it. You can come here ranting and raving telling me to get the out of here. You didn't just do that? I didn't just settle this out here. I'm not going to say nothing. You want to pull your boy off? I'm telling you what you guys are. I tried to explain it to you. We've had three police impersonators. That's best at all. We're ripping and stripping out here. Robbing people. You know what? Carjacking, guns, I guess the whole nine yards. If you don't believe it, I want my detectives to call you. I, I want them to personally call you because I'm a rookie and you don't, I don't know what the is going on. Just calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Because right. we're not getting anywhere yelling at each other, right? <laughs> if that's the case. No, I'm lying, bro. I'm lying. See, I like this guy's backtracking a little bit now that he's like actually hearing him out and like, okay, they've got these cases. This is why we're doing it. He's like, yeah, I want, I, I want him to call you. This guy's like, all right, listen, we're not getting anywhere by yelling. Let's uh, let's relax a little bit. I come out here typically <laughs> and put my gun out on police because that's what I do. That's what they teach us. Six months out of the academy to do. I want them to call you personally because you know what? Apparently, my way is not good enough. So I'm going to leave it as is. After the incident, State Police Superintendent Colonel Rick Fuentes issued a statement giving his full support to the trooper involved, claiming his actions were, quote, fully justified, given the recent carjackings involving police impersonators. The statement Oh, made shoot. No and there was two jets. He wasn't lying. He said three, but there was at least the two it, it mentioned, so. No mention of Colonel Fuentes' opinion on the trooper's professionalism during the encounter, and it does not appear that any disciplinary action was taken against the trooper for his behavior. Bergen County Police Chief Brian Higgins stated that his department had reviewed the incident and determined that neither the county officers nor the state trooper was at fault. However, Bergen County Executive Kathleen Donovan's Chief of Staff, Jean Barada, reported that Sergeant Escobar and Officer Dubois did receive some sort of punishment for their actions. She did not release any further details regarding the type of punishment, citing restrictions in the Attorney General's guidelines on internal affairs investigations. Overall, the state trooper gets a C for maintaining an overly aggressive and disrespectful demeanor throughout the encounter, screaming at the Bergen County officers, and repeatedly using profanity and other discourteous language towards his fellow officers. But while I understand why the trooper wanted to ensure that Officer Dubois was a legitimate police officer and felt the need to draw his his weapon while approaching the scene of a potential carjacking, the trooper's conduct was unnecessarily confrontational from the get-go, and his behavior after he had confirmed Officer Dubois' identity was even worse. Tempers were clearly running high on both sides of this confrontation, but the Bergen County officer's conduct does not excuse the state trooper for his extreme breach of professionalism during this interaction. As the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice Model Rules and Regulations state, officers should, quote, always remain calm regardless <laughs> of provocation. And this standard should still apply when the source of the provocation is another officer. Yeah, no, that's a fact. The Bergen County F. officers F. get a C minus. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, no, no, no. I don't know why I said F. I think I just assumed that somebody had to get an F. But in all reality, like, they both had fault in this for sure. The state trooper, I thought, was in his right based on what this person had broke down as well. But even before that, it seemed like, based on his, it made sense, but yeah, he was super, yeah, this, this, this went bad on both sides. Needlessly escalating the situation instead of simply confirming their status as police officers, engaging in over-assertive and disrespectful behavior throughout the interaction, and screaming at the state trooper for an extended period of time. Although it is understandable that Officer Dubois was offended by the state trooper's demands, particularly given the trooper's aggressive demeanor and the fact that he unholstered his firearm, the reality is that he was conducting a traffic stop in plain clothes and an unmarked vehicle and a reasonable officer should be able to understand the trooper's need to confirm his identity while trying yo so you know what's interesting to me oh my bad i meant full screen is i i do get that and i, I agree right like he said he, he may have felt a little bit offended based on the way that the officer approached it so on and so forth like yes he's got to identify because he's pulling over in an unmarked car and you know but the way that he was approached made him feel like yo what da, da, da. what's interesting to me is that People will justify that in the sense of the cop. But what about the innocent person that the cop approaches and is super aggressive with right off the bat? And that person acts a little bit offended or, you know, I, I've even been the person to say, ah, just be calm. Just deal with it and worry about it afterwards. I don't know. Just an interesting 
comparison that I happen to have made, right? Like if that was an, an, an everyday person and they acted like that, regardless of being innocent or not, and the cop going up to them, they probably would have ended up with a couple of charges. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, and, and again, I'm not here to throw cops under the bus. I think most cops are good. I think there's just a few bad ones and them unfortunately have given people this blanket that they just want to say all oh, cops are horrible, which is, is not the case. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. This was an interesting one. The officer was just out of training six months or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Anybody ever been pulled over by an undercover cop? I'm curious. Let me know down in the comments below. Another video will pop up here. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe. I'll catch you next video, homies.